Welcome back guys, Jimmy Jules here again with another Cray Prop tutorial. In today's episode, we'll be going over a few props, and these are the music, ambience, and sound effect props. Let's go through what some of these settings will do first, and then we'll take you through some of the examples of what we can do with these props for our games. So we've got three of our settings boxes here, the music on the left, the ambience in the middle, and the sound effect on the right. We'll start with the music because this one has the least settings. At the top of all of these settings pages, we have the option to change the audio that's going to be played. If we take our music settings and click on the top option, we get a list of things to choose from. We can choose music, for example, and this will show us a list of the music that's available for us to choose from. We can click on the little play icon to the left of the music title to hear a sample of what this will sound like. Once we've found a good audio option for our game, we then click on the name of the audio so that it shows up in our top setting over here, and then we can click this box again to close the selector menu. This is the same for the ambience and the sound effect settings as well, but of course we have different audio to choose from from these props. We also have our test option next down on the settings, and this will give us an example of what our audio prop is going to sound like if we were to use it in a game. We've got this setting across all three of the settings pages. So for example, if I press the test button on the sound effect with the dragon scream sound effect, it will give us an example of what that dragon scream is going to sound like. If we change the volume here to say 30 and press the test again, you can hear the sound effect is now much quieter and we can test this without having to go into the game multiple times and adjust the settings. We'll just set this back to 100 for now. The next setting down is the play input and we'll want to send a signal into this port whenever we want our audio to play. As we went through before, the volume will adjust the audio volume of the prop itself. This setting is again global across all of the audio props. Next up we have the inner zone, input and output, and this inner zone will represent at what range the audio is at its max volume. With Cray, by default, the sound is localized to around the prop. So in this example, you can see that our inner zone is at the moment 5, which is a radius of 5, as we can see indicated by the inner lines in this circle. Just to make things a bit easier to see, I've made the floor black. So you can see we have our music selected here, and this inner line here is representing where the music will be at its loudest. The range is represented by the outer circle. So if we increase this to 12, you can see that outer circle jumps out further. Our inner zone is not affected by this value. What this line represents is where the audio will start playing. So you can imagine if the player enters from this side up here and starts to come into this area, the music will start playing at a low volume when the player hits this line. Then as they get closer to the inner zone, the volume will increase until they hit that inner zone where the volume will be at its loudest. So Cray will take care of all of the fading for us and will fade the volume in from when the player reaches the range line and increase the volume to maximum as they get closer to the inner zone. Once they're inside the zone, the volume will still be at its maximum until they start to walk out of the area again and it will start to fade out. Just to give you a bit of an example of what this will do in game, you can see I've set up these two primitive cubes. One is on the outer range of the audio and the other is in the inner range. So you'll notice when we jump into play mode in a moment, once I hit this first square, the audio will start playing at a low volume and then the volume will increase until we hit the second square and then we'll be at max volume. You can see at the moment I'm not hearing any audio because I'm not in that radius of the prop. This first cube is just on the radius, so I should just start to hear some audio when I reach this cube, and you can probably hear that quite low volume at the moment. As we get closer to the second cube, which is getting closer to the inner radius of the prop, you can see the volume increases to maximum, and now we're in that inner zone where the volume is at its full. We can then leave this area again, and the volume will decrease back to nothing. So that's just a quick explanation of the radiuses and what they do. And then we also have this global range setting as well. And that will basically negate the ranges completely. So once this is enabled, you can ignore the inner zone and range settings because they won't be in use anymore. So if we tick this, you can see the zones completely disappear from the prop, meaning that the volume will be constant throughout the entire game. So if you want a sound effect, music or ambience to be constant no matter where you are in the game, this would be the setting you choose. You can see I've got the same music set up here with the two cubes on the outer and the inner radius, but if we tick the global range option, you can see it doesn't matter where in the game scene I am, that music is going to be the same volume. That's all of the settings on the music prop. 
The settings on the ambience prop are all the same. However, the ambience prop also adds pitch and dynamic pitch to the settings. With the pitch and dynamic pitch options on the ambience and the sound effects settings, if we want to change the pitch of the audio that's playing, we can increase the number here, for example, to 10. And if I hit test again, we've got the arcade sound playing at the moment. You can hear the pitch of that arcade sound is increased dramatically. We can, of course, do the opposite of this as well and put in a negative number to reduce the pitch. And you can hear the pitch is lowered. We've also got the dynamic pitch option, which will randomly choose a pitch when the audio is played. So I'm testing this audio now with dynamic pitch turned on. It's chosen a pitch for this audio to play at and it's playing at the moment. But if I press test again, it's going to choose another pitch and play the audio at that pitch instead. So each time the audio starts playing, it's going to change pitch. This can be especially useful for things like sound effects and adding a bit of variety to them. So those are the two pitch settings that the ambience and sound effect props bring in. The settings for the sound effect are all the same as the ambience, except for the never interrupt option. With this option disabled, if the sound is playing, then before it gets the chance to finish, another signal is sent to the play port, the sound will be restarted from the beginning. If the setting is enabled, if we send a signal into the play port when the sound is already playing, it will do absolutely nothing. The sound effect will wait for the audio to finish before it plays another lot of audio. We can of course change these settings on the fly as well with the props. So we can send signals into and out of the volume, pitch, range, and inner zone settings. But now that we've been through those, we can go through some examples of what we can do with these. First of all, I'll go through how we might use the ambience props to add a bit more effects to our world and make it feel a bit more like it's a real place. We've got a very simple setup here. We've got a Windy Heights ambience, and this is just being played by an if not gate, which is always going to be turned on because we've got nothing plugged into the other side of it. I've set the range of this ambience prop to be quite high. So you can see that inner circle in the middle there is the inner range. And then we've got the outer circle where the ambience will start playing. Then in our cave over here, we've got another ambience prop. And this one is set to the mines ambience. So it sounds like we're in a bit of an underground mine when we go into the cave. So you can see we're next to this red box where our Windy Heights ambience was located. And then as we walk closer to the mines, the wind will start to fade out and we'll get this dark cave-like audio in place of it. So it sounds much more like we're in a cave. Then as we come back out of the cave, that Windy Heights prop will get closer and we'll start playing over the top of it again. Again, this is a very simple setup, but it can really add a lot of effect into your game worlds and make them feel much more alive. Next up, we'll go through how to create a coin pickup that plays a sound every time you pick up a coin. We'll also do a few extra things with this setup just to go through some of the options that we have on the sound effects settings page. So these are all the props that we're going to need, and we've just got our sound effect over here, and we've got this set to purchase two. If I hit the test button here, you can hear what that sounds like. So let's go through the process of making this pickup. I'm going to drag our gold coin on top of our sensor here, and you can see I've got the sensor set to a radius of 1.5, which is quite small around the coin. This is going to be the pickup radius. We're then going to use our sensor to power a variable modifier to play the coin sound. We're then going to use our sensor's detected output, and we're going to power a variable modifier to set the play coin sound variable to 1. So we've got a variable here named play coin sound, and we're going to set this variable to 1 when the player steps in this area. We're also going to activate our destroyer so that the coin is destroyed after it's picked up and can't be picked up twice. And for a bit of visual effect, we'll add in a rotator. So we're going to target our gold coin with our rotator. And we'll also target the gold coin with our lift prop. You can see this just makes it turn and bob up and down. I'm going to highlight all of the props that we have here except for the variable and the sound effect, and I'll explain why shortly. And we're going to press the B shortcut to box all of those up in our box it up box. Now that this is all nicely tidied away, we've got everything contained in this box. Now you might think we'll want to power this sound effect with our detected output as well. However, if we do this, because we're using a destroyer to destroy the coin immediately after it's picked up, the sound effect would be destroyed along with it and it wouldn't get a chance to play the audio. And that is where our variable modifier comes in, setting the play coin sound variable. So let's get that part of it set up. We'll just take our variable current output 
and we're going to plug this directly into the play port of our sound effect. So now whenever our play coin sound is set to one, it's going to power the play port on our sound effect and play that coin sound. So let's just make two of these coins for an example. And you can see when we pick up the coin, the sound plays, but however, we haven't targeted our box with the destroyer. So we need to jump back into edit mode, hover over our destroyer prop, then press the T shortcut and select the box containing all of our props. We'll then just copy this one again, the correct setup. And there you can see the coin is destroyed when we pick it up. However, if we go to pick up the second coin, it's currently not going to play that audio. But why is that? Because at the moment, once our play coin sound is set to one, there's nothing setting it back to zero to reset the process. So we'll grab another variable modifier and we'll select the play coin sound variable and we're going to reset this. And we're just going to do this whenever the variable is set to one. So you can imagine our play coin sound variable is going to be set to one. Then it's going to power our variable modifier to reset that back to zero. So it's basically going to produce a pulse for us to play that sound, which is exactly what we're after. So now if we pick up our first coin, it plays the audio, then our variable is set back to zero again. So when we pick up the next coin, it'll set the variable to one and play the audio again. We've also got the dynamic pitch option turned on and you can hear the pitch of the sound effect change ever so slightly each time we pick up a coin. So at the moment, we've got our coin props stored in this box here. We've got our variable controlling our sound effect, and then our variable modifier resetting the process so it can be repeated. We'll of course also want to add some currency into this so that when our player picks up a coin, it adds currency to their score. For this, we're going to use a currency prop and a currency modifier prop. We're going to use our currency modifier to add one coin to our currency down the bottom here, which is our coins currency. And we're also going to do this whenever the play coin sound is activated, because this means the player has picked up a coin. You might be thinking, why don't we put this currency modifier inside the box with the rest of our pickup props, which is perfectly valid. We certainly can do that. This will work either way. However, it's slightly more efficient to have the currency modifier out here, because this means we'll only need one currency modifier prop. Whereas if we had the prop in the coin box itself, if we copied this a bunch of times, we'd then create three more currency props. And that's just three props that we don't need to have in our game scene. We'll add a little bit more onto this setup as well. We're going to go through how we might increase the pitch for each coin that's picked up by the player. So the coin sound will get higher in pitch for each coin that was picked up. We're going to be using the pitch slider here and we'll use the input. And we're also going to use our currency as well to control this. We'll just need one extra prop and that is going to be the calculator. Now I found a good pitch range for this particular sound effect is between negative five and positive five. Because our player will start out with zero coins, we want the pitch to start out on the lower scale as well. So we want our pitch to go from negative five when they have zero coins to positive five when they have 10 coins. Of course, to get this zero to a negative five, just to begin with, we need to subtract five from our current currency value. So we're going to grab our current output from our currency, pipe that into value A, and then we're going to subtract five from that value to get negative five. We're then going to plug this result into the pitch of our sound effect. In play mode now, you can hear when we pick up our first coin, the pitch of that sound effect is quite low. Then when we pick up the next coin, it's going to be slightly higher, and this will increase until we get to 10 coins where it will stop increasing and be at its maximum. So that's just a small little effect that we can do just by modifying the pitch slider on the settings page. And we're just increasing this with the number of coins that we pick up. We were only able to do this pitch increase because we had a centralized sound effect rather than having our sound effect individually inside the pickup. Having that one centralized sound effect is great for making quick adjustments because you don't need to go into each and every single pickup that you create and adjust the sound effect. It's all just stored in this one sound effect here that's globally adjusted. It's also better for game optimization because we only have one copy of the sound effect. We're not putting any unnecessary stress on the game engine. Anyway, guys, that's just about all the examples that we've got for today. I hope you learned a bit about how these props work and how they might work together with the other props as well. I can't wait to see what you all do with them. If you've got any questions or just have anything to say, definitely leave a comment. This has been Jimmy Jules, and I'll see you in the next one.